Mr. Ahmed, are you able to hear me? Yeah, I can hear. Yeah. Yes. So I was saying that 1150s uh, when the launch will happen. This is India's first mission to study the sun. Uh, what is so unique about this mission and how is ISRO attempting it differently from all other previous missions? Uh, the uniqueness about this mission is uh, unlike actually going to a low Earth orbit where you revolve around the uh, Earth for at 500 kilometers or so, you go to geosynchronous orbit, which is, let's say, 36,000 kilometers. Then you go to moon. We went to the moon, which is around 4 lakh kilometers. So we leave Earth and then we will be grabbed by the lunar gravity. And then we went to planet Mars, very, very far, 10 months journey. And then again, we were grabbed by planet Mars. Uh, so it was all easy going in a way. Uh, but here is the case where uh, you first revolve around the Earth in three orbits. And then you heading towards a fictitious point called a Lagrangian point, which is there somewhere between you and Sun. And then there you make a circle, a hollow, hollow space where you will actually orient yourself in such a way that you, you circle in an orbit very very unique never ever has been tried with this road by, by this road in a way yeah right uh i was going through the la latest update by isro and isro has very categorically clarified because you know like you said previous missions we have actually landed on a surface but this time we're not landing anywhere or you know we are not even touching the surface because it's not a solid surface it's full of gas and it's really hot uh, what kind of challenges do you think uh are going to be faced when uh, India kicks off this mission. Yeah. So uh, the uniqueness, as again, let's talk about the uniqueness again. So you you are suspended in the space. You are heading towards uh, sun, and you you are going almost for in the next three months after you leave Earth. You are basically in a space. The only way for you to actually orient yourself in a proper direction is looking at the stars. So there are star sensors which will really, really let you know that in the space, even though you're suspended in a, in a crazy way, but still you, you will be directed by the stars and you make sure that you go to that fictitious point. Let me repeat the word again, which is Lagrangian mm -hmm. one point. And in three months you go there, the most critical point, the most critical point is actually to revolve around that fictitious point find an orbit around that fictitious point and there you have everything the sun is right in front of you as if you have gone and stood in front of mount everest and is there and you look at mount everest like that it will be right uh you know aside of this i think the biggest question arises why why are we going to study the sun what is the need to study the sun for the benefit of our viewers could you simplify it for us and help us understand the need to uh, undertake this challenging mission. Yeah, sun <clears throat> looks very circular, very cute, uh, bright ball of uh, uh, good looking and all. But the closer you go to, and we know that it's actually few crores, I mean, 10 million degrees centigrade at the core. And let's talk about the surface. Surface is all we are very much worried about. And we see, we see a thing called photosphere, which is actually 6,000 degrees centigrade. For God's sake, at 600 degrees centigrade, every metal actually melts, 600. So we are at 6,000 uh, degrees centigrade on the surface of the sun. And then there is intriguingly, there is a thing called corona, which is beyond this photosphere. So what I look at the sun is all the beautiful uh, photosphere. Beyond that, the temperature would have gone below 6,000 kilometers, uh, 6,000 degrees centigrade. Instead, it will rise up to 1 lakh degrees centigrade. The, that's highly, highly amusing. People, I mean, the scientists have always been scratching their head and saying that, how can I get this? So there are a lot of explanations which are, uh, people are looking for. In the human history, in the modern human history, a couple of times, at least two to three times, uh, the electric connections are all snapped. Uh, the telegraphic uh, connections were all snapped in Quebec and all in Canada. That can happen tomorrow, anytime, because of those uh, right. atrocious solar storms. So we want to study, we want to predict how that is all happening and can we learn a little more just before it happens. Right. Uh, it's going to be a long journey, so 125 days. And uh, of course, the kind of instruments that the spacecraft is taking is also going to play a crucial role uh, because the kind of experiments that will be conducted mm -hmm. there. Uh, could you please help us understand uh, as far as the kind of payloads and instruments that uh, Aditya L1 would be taking with it? 
Yeah, uh, this question is, I take it very close to my heart. Uh, exactly 20 years ago, uh, in 2003, India was grappling with what kind of experiments to do, what type of science to be done on moon. And then uh, I, I was called from Department of Atomic Energy and I, I go to DOS. I build one science experiment. <clears throat> it, uh, it's actually President Kalam's pet project, Moon Impact Probe, where uh, the, the mission was lasting only for 20 minutes and we spent four years to build that instrument. Today, exactly 20 years fast forward, we are carrying seven instruments to look at sun. These, all these seven yeah. instruments, each one, each one is weighing almost few tens of kilograms, state of the art instruments built right from the scratch, right here in India. It's an amazing piece of instruments. So if you permit me to speak about these seven instruments out of which four are the ones which look at the sun and sun various aspects of the sun, such as visible light, ultraviolet light, and X-rays and the huge amount of energetic phenomenon which are taking around the sun, that's all carried by X-rays. So we have two instruments uh, studying the soft X-rays and hard X-rays, which are different kind of X-rays. Like the X-rays, we use it for our uh, bones, seeing our body and all that, medical X-rays. So similar kind of X-rays are just rushing uh, through the sun and they are coming towards earth also. By studying these uh, different radiation by those four instruments, we would be able to categorize what type of reactions are taking place on photosphere, which is the immediate sphere around the sun, or the, the enigmatic corona, which we want to study more. Apart from these four, there are three more instruments which are actually uh, uh, sampling the nearby amb uh, ambience. It's called in situ experiments. One fantastic instrument there is our electric pole height kind of a one kind of a rod which will measure the local magnetic field at almost 15 lakh kilometers and this is the same magnetic field which is created by the solar particles which are actually sweeping across that area and he heading towards earth and beyond so these seven instruments are all built in india indigenous and waiting to be uh, starting starting their action Thanks. Right. So this question stems uh, out of curiosity because you have been a part of Chandrayaan 1. Uh, what is the atmosphere or the kind of sentiment like in the ISRO headquarters or the control room? Or what Do ISRO scientists have butterflies? Are they nervous as well when such a big mission uh, takes off? Yeah, so uh, if the mission is successful, you see the guys only clapping and then uh, being happy and all. I, I just can't yeah. uh, take you through those emotions which are run, uh, running in their heart. Uh, I, I myself, uh, just I nurtured that instrument like my baby and then that instrument to whether it was to work. So huge amount of emotions will be running. And if that goes well and you see the people, my boss uh, at that time uh, in Moon Impact Probe Mission, he was 60 years old. Uh, as soon as the instrument actually sent that first spectrum, he was jumping like a child. A gentleman at 60 years of old jumps like a child and it's an amazing feeling. And uh, you have all that buried in your heart. You're waiting that moment to come in. And you, whatever you see is truly, truly what actually goes on in their, uh, in their emotions. You see the outburst. It's so of heartening, to, heartening to hear. So, you know, ISRO has always been a, you know, superstar india's indigenous superstar or if i might say rock star you know and recently with the mars mission chandrayaan 3 i think it has brought the nation together you know chandrayaan 3 the success of chandrayaan 3 kind of united india right uh, and of course there's a lot of excitement and curiosity about how to get through isro so a lot of students who are watching us do you have any tips for them as to how they can realize their isro dream how do you get it to isro what do you have to study how much hard work yeah. you have to put in? Yeah, this is a very, very important question. And I, I have given a few hundreds of lectures at engineering colleges and all. In all those lectures, the guys who invite me, they tell me that, please tell us about our students on how to get into ISRO. And I would love to answer this question. And primarily what they have is annually as the academic program goes around, few months before ISRO prepares, uh, and lets all the people to come over uh, to the ISRO and they have a written exam and then they have a very rigorous interview. So it before just a small statistics before the Chandrayaan one, there were, let's say, X number of people who were uh, actually applying for 500 to 800 intake, which is varying over a period of time. And after the moon mission, ISRO never, ever looked back. It just keeps on increasing their intake. 
So they take anywhere yeah. between few hundreds of uh, engineers uh, every year. So that yeah. number increased uh, as President Kalam actually it was his typical idea to say that let's uh, attract our young talent towards ISRO. You have a rise of 10 times rise is what they, they explained. 10 times more number of people are applying. So uh, isro.gov.in is the site, right? So the, the general recruitment site opens. You upload your marks and everything and you are invited for a written exam. You clear the written exam and then rigorous interviews goes on. Every bit of you, it doesn't matter whether you speak good English and all, doesn't matter. You, you could actually yeah. speak in a bit of, bit of your language and a bit of English. But if you're good in your subject, they pick you and and if anybody i gave, i remember giving a lecture in baramulla in kashmir one girl uh, veiled girl with uh, uh, al hijab and all she said that well i see a lot of south indians working in isro do i stand to have a chance in making it to the isro i said look at me i'm a guy from a village i mean i couldn't even speak good english when i made it to my university uh, course but I, I made it to isro purely because of merit so I, I told that girl that you have every chance to make it to this one. Please do come, do apply and you are welcome is all I said. So it's, it's open to anybody. That is a very inspiring thing to hear. So I know you have to leave, but I just uh, have one more question. Yesterday, uh, you know, you shared something very interesting with me and it was an eye opener that you said that a lot of scientists in ISRO are from government colleges, government aided colleges and are not necessarily from fancy universities or uh, they don't have uh, education from uh, international universities or even IITs. That is a, I think that is a success story in itself that also speaks about the kind of dedication our scientists have shown and our education system. Uh, because I think if given a chance, a lot of Indian parents want to spend their life savings and send their kids abroad. But look at Indian colleges and universities. They are producing ISRO scientists. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I was actually there for five years uh, and one of the uh, AP center of ISRO is Vikram Sarabhai Space Center. So VSSC is open to every Indian national. As I said, uh, I go from, let's say, from Andhra Pradesh or Telangana. So I go there. So you have people from all walks of life. You, uh, I've seen people from different places and all. No bars as far as the regional uh, belonging is concerned. However, what I, intriguing to me was truly, truly, there was hardly a gentleman from IIT, for that matter, NIT, maybe a couple of folks from NIT. Most of the guys are from from very humble background, uh, engineering for that matter, or let's say PhDs are also not from P, uh, from IITs. Maybe what I did is I belong to one uh, from a university, and uh, as I was saying, my dad always wanted to become an engineer. I could not become engineer in my life. That particular scar in my heart that I could never become an engineer, which my father dreamt of, that ambition is there in my heart and it's racing through my emotions every other day that can I touch that moon? Can I touch that sun? And I touch the moon for God's sake. I mean, truly, truly my instrument went and fell on the moon. And today these guys are sending their instrument looking at sun. Uh, I think these ambitions will make us walk that extra mile. And I think we try to truly try to touch the moon. Absolutely. And the, the kind of achievements and contribution you have made to India success stories, sir, one can only hope. Uh, that your wishes uh, reach the ISRO team. Do you have any message for uh, uh, the ISRO team that is uh, waiting with a bated breath to launch Aditya 1? Definitely, I like to say this. Uh, uh, moon is something uh, which was like a T20 match, which India has actually <laughs> done exceedingly well. And tomorrow, today, what we are going to do is a test match. And as our team has done so well in test matches, we beat England in England long ago. So I, I, I want that India should do exceed in no single country has ever gone to the Lagrangian point and looked at sun. We are the first country, country as a country only. We have only gone as uh, uh, NASA, Euro, European Space Agency, where NASA itself had uh, people, uh, instruments from Germany, etc. Here is a place, all the seven indigenous batsmen trying to face the best bowlers, that is the sun. And I wish them all the very, very best uh, go for sun. Right, uh, that is so beautifully put. And CNBC TV 18 also wishes ISRO um, all the best for this mission. We hope that uh, a lot of interesting experiments are conducted and humanity gets uh, new revelations. So, thank you so much for your precious thank time. You. Hope to continue these conversations ahead as well in the future. Thank you so much for making time. Absolutely. Absolute pleasure. Thank you.